Okay, hello, Year 7 Mangosville School students. Welcome to our brand new Mango Science YouTube channel. And welcome to the start of a brand new topic all about the Earth. My name is Mr. Crozier, and I'm going to be taking you through lesson one of this new topic. Now, before we get started, make sure that you've got a pen and paper, preferably an exercise book. You were all sent home with an exercise book before Easter in your learning packs. So make sure you've got something to write on. Make sure you've got a pen. You will need to be writing during these lessons. OK, here we go. So our topic is the Earth. Why do we need to learn about the Earth? Well, all of our materials and chemicals come from the Earth's natural resources. And this is a chemistry topic. We can use chemistry to change natural resources into useful products. We're going to be looking a lot at that through the various lessons in this topic. And today we are starting with lesson one. The driving question is, how deep can we dig? So just as if you were in school, write the driving question at the top of your page. Good idea to underline it, keep your work organized. And there will be various uh, little writing questions in this lesson and then a larger writing task towards the end. We're going to follow the same format of your normal school lessons. So we've got the keywords here. We're going to be looking at the crust, the mantle, the core. We are going to be looking at the temperature and density inside the Earth and talking about how earthquake or seismic waves give us evidence for what is inside the Earth. So our driving question is, how deep can we dig? Here we go. So the surface of the Earth is an amazingly varied place. So many different uh, habitats and environments right across the surface of the Earth. 70% of the Earth's surface is covered in ocean, but we've also got grassland and we've also got forests. We've also got deserts. We've also got ice caps. We've also got uh, mountains and right from the highest heights of the earth right down to the deepest depths of the earth there is an amazing amount of variety on earth but all of that is just on the surface what about if we were to dig deeper through the surface of the earth into the interior of the earth what would we find what lies beneath the surface of planet earth is it rocks all the way down let's find out here we go. Right now, the Earth's crust is surprisingly thin. It is made of rock, but on average, it is only 35 kilometers deep. Now, to put that in perspective, think about how massive the Earth is. And then just think about the fact that 35 kilometers is only as far as Bristol to Gloucester. In fact, it's slightly less than the distance from Bristol to Gloucester. That is how thin the Earth's crust truly is. Even at the Himalayas, the largest mountain range in the world, even from the top of the Himalayas to the bottom of the crust is only about 80 kilometers deep. Below that is liquid molten rock that we call magma. How far is 80 kilometers? It is just a little bit further than the distance from Bristol to Swindon. That's how thin the Earth's crust really is. Now, if the Earth was the size of a balloon and the Earth's crust would be the thickness of a postage stamp. So we are all living on actually quite a thin crust of rock. And that crust is split into plates, a bit like the, the patches on a football. We call them tectonic plates. You will learn more about that in geography, I'm sure. Uh, what we're gonna concentrate on today for this science topic is what lies beneath this crust. OK, but before we go any further, how much of that were you able to take in? Uh, pause the video for a moment and see how many facts you can list about the Earth's crust. And then uh, I'll go through the answers after a few seconds pause. But you should pause the video now and see how many facts about the Earth's crust you can come up with. Pause now. If you can hear some noises in the background, that is my daughter. She is uh, seven. She's here at home with me, just like you're at home with your families. OK, here we go. What did I come up with for my facts about the Earth's crust? It is a thin layer. It is made of rock. It's only 35 to 80 kilometers deep. It is split into plates called tectonic plates. And underneath that thin crust of rock is liquid rock called magma. OK, moving on. 
So the driving question was, how deep can we dig? Well, what is actually the answer to that? How far through the crust can we actually de uh, dig? It's only 35 kilometers down. While there was an American project about this where they attempted to drill beneath the ocean. So they went to a place where they felt like the, the ocean wasn't too deep and it would be a good place for drilling. And they built some ships with drills on to see how deep they could get. Well, I can tell you that they managed to get 183 meters below the ocean into the Earth's crust. That's about 3% of the way down. Now, there was a rival Russian project, and they did theirs on land, and they managed to get further. They managed to dig a hole that went down 12,000 metres, right? But even that is only just less than halfway through the crust. Now, this brings up an important question. If we could only dig halfway through the crust at best, how do we know what's underneath? Now, we can uh, infer or deduce the presence of hot molten rock called magma because of volcanoes. We know that lava comes out of volcanoes, so there must be something hot and molten down underneath. But how far down does that magma go? Is there anything else inside the earth? How could we find out? Well, drilling through the earth is impractical, so scientists came up with a different method, and they decided to measure earthquake waves, sometimes called seismic waves. And what they found is, well, what they did was to put a lot of different research stations all around the surface of the Earth. So this was a big collaboration between scientists in many different countries, and they measured earthquake waves. So if an earthquake happened in one part of the Earth, that would be picked up, the vibrations of the waves would be picked up at all of the other stations. And then they would compare the pattern of where the waves had gone. And they found something like this. When earthquakes vibrate, they give out waves. These are the wave fronts. And the waves didn't end up where they predicted. So what they did was they worked backwards from the pattern of where waves had gone, and they realized that the waves must have changed direction. Now, when a wave changes direction, it is either because it has reflected or because it has refracted. So let's go through uh, what we mean by that, okay? And if you have a look at this here, this wave here, Scientists might have predicted for it to go straight through the Earth, but instead its direction changed. Now, if a wave were to bounce off something inside the Earth, that would be called reflection. If a wave changes direction like this, it's called refraction. So part of the earthquake wave is detected at a different station than expected. And it is a layer inside the Earth that has caused the wave to change direction. Right? Now, waves change direction in refraction because they change speed. So this layer must have a different density, a different thickness if you like. And if it is more dense, then that will be slowing down the wave and causing it to change direction. And the scientists were able to work backwards from that pattern of refraction to figure out how big, how thick these layers must be, and also to get an idea of what their density must be. Okay, so if a wave passes into a substance which is more dense, then it slows down. If the wave slows down, it's going to change direction. That's caused, called refraction. Scientists can use the pattern of refraction to work out the change in the wave speed, and that gives them some clues as to how dense this layer must be. They can also use a pattern of waves to work out what the size and shape of that layer must be. And what they found is that the density increases towards the centre of the Earth. We also think the temperature increases towards the centre of the Earth. Now, what are these layers? What are they called and what are they made of? Well, let's have a look. Well, this one just below the surface, uh, below the Earth's crust, this is the one that's made of hot molten rock called magma, and it's called the mantle. Then the Earth has a core, and it seems to be in two layers. The outer core is liquid iron and nickel, then the inner core is solid iron and nickel. So let's go through that in just a little bit more detail, right? So the Earth's crust, that thin crust layer of rock, floats on top of the mantle. The mantle is liquid, made of magma, hot, molten rock. And the Earth's crust, those tectonic plates, floats on top of it. The mantle slowly flows around. That's why we get tectonic plate movement, which is what causes earthquakes. and the temperature of the mantle is around 1,000 degrees to around 3,000 degrees. So the mantle is a thick layer of liquid rock called magma that flows slowly around and it's got a temperature of 1,000 to 3,000 degrees. 
Next, the outer part of the core is made of metal, but it's liquid metal. It's incredibly hot down there, 4,000 to 6,000 degrees C, hot enough to have melted the metal. So we've got hot, liquid, molten metal, and it's made of iron and nickel, both of which are magnetic metals. It's worth remembering, not every metal is magnetic, but iron and nickel both are. And that's what gives the Earth its magnetic field. The inner core is also made of metal, but this time it's uh, solid. Now you might think, hang on a minute, but it's 6,000 degrees. Shouldn't it be melted? Well, there's a huge amount of pressure, and the pressure is high enough to keep it solid, even though it's above its normal melting point. Okay, so the inner core is solid, even though it's hot enough to melt the liquid, because of the incredibly intense high pressure, which actually keeps it as a solid. So the inner core is made of solid metal, magnetic iron and nickel at around 6,000 degrees C. So we have the thin crust, then the mantle made of hot magma, then the outer core made of liquid iron and nickel, and the inner core made of solid iron and nickel. Okay, how much of that were you able to take in? Again, pause the video and read through these four options in this hinge question and decide which one you think is correct. Pause the video now. Okay, here we go, we're gonna continue. And the correct answer was B, the crust, then the mantle, then the outer core, then the inner core. Okay, here we go. Can you remember the descriptions of each part of the Earth's structure? Once again, pause the video and match up one, two, three, four with A, B, C, and D. Pause it now. Okay, welcome back, we're gonna continue. And let's look at the answers. Right, so the crust is a thin layer of rock split into plates. The mantle is made of liquid rock, magma, which slowly flows around. The outer core is liquid metal, made of iron and nickel. And the inner core is solid metal, made of iron and nickel. Okay, so here we've got them with their correct definitions next to them. And remember that as we get closer to the centre of the Earth, the temperature increases, it's hotter, and the density increases, it is more dense in the centre of the Earth. Okay, can you remember, how did scientists work out the structure of the Earth? If we were in school, we would get you to turn to a learning partner and explain it to them in your own words. And so one thing you could do, if there's somebody available in your house, you could quickly try and explain it to them. Actually, a really good way to tell if you understand something is, can you put it in words to somebody else? And so feel free to do that, pause the video, uh, grab somebody, whatever they're doing, and uh, stop them for a moment and say, can I just explain this to you? And try and put it in your own words. And if it makes sense to them, then you can clearly understand it. And that means you understand it too. So pause the video for a moment, and then I'll take you through my version of the answer. Pause it now. Right, let's continue. What did I say? I said they measured earthquake waves at stations all around the world. They recorded the pattern of waves. And they realized that the layers inside the Earth were making the waves change direction. And they could work out the size of those layers and their density from the pattern of earthquake waves that they recorded. You are going to be explaining something like this uh, in the proper writing task in just a moment. Right, okay, if we wanted to add to that and explain this in even more detail, we could say that when a wave changes direction because it changes speed, we call that refraction. The Earth's inner layers are more dense, so they slow down the waves. That's what causes them to refract. And the pattern of refraction can be used to estimate the change in the wave speed and therefore the potential density of the different layers. The more dense it is, the more it's gonna slow down the wave and that's gonna affect the pattern of refraction. Okay, time for the proper writing task. Now in school, this is where you'd have about 10, maybe 12 minutes to work your way through orange, green, yellow, and blue. Right, so make sure that you've got the driving question at the top of your page 
underlined like this. And what I suggest you do is just do a brief little copy of this diagram, just a sketch, literally just a circle with some other circles inside it. Uh, it doesn't have to be fancy, it doesn't have to be detailed. You're just gonna label the name of each part. Then over here in a table like this, what's its main features? Okay, what's the description of each part? Uh, and there's a sentence here to complete as well. And then, uh, please remember that the reason why we do it this way is that uh, helps us check your learning because orange means facts and keywords. So can you recall and remember the names of each part of the structure? Then we're moving into more of an explanation. So kind of describing, explaining what these main features are. Then yellow, using detailed understanding to explain the situation. In this case, how did scientists work out the structure of the earth? And then combining in a difficult idea for blue. A more even more difficult idea, I should say. How can we use refraction to help work out the density of each part of the Earth's structure? All right, so this is where you need to put a really good effort into your work. Write in full sentences, keep it neat, keep it tidy, keep it organized. That way you will be able to look back at your work in future and read through it and it will make sense. You'll be able to revise it. You'll be able to look back and realize what you learned. So please do a thorough job of your work. Write properly in full sentences, pause the video for as long as you need. And then when you've done a proper job of putting in as much effort as you can to really good writing, then unpause the video and we'll go through the answers. But for now, take your time, 10 minutes, 12 minutes, and write in detail with proper scientific ideas. Go for it. Okay, we're gonna move along to looking at the answers. So I hope that you've put the right level of detail into your work, the right level of effort. That's what we are expecting you to have done so that you can keep the quality of your learning going even though you're doing this from home instead of in school. Now, uh, in school, I always get my classes to get their green pens out. So you could do this in a different color. Really important to check your work, tick it if you got it correct, and hopefully feel good about that, feel positive about that. But if there's anything you didn't think of, any extra detail you could add in, then do so, because then you'll be able to look back at this work and have complete notes and for it all to be correct with the right level of scientific detail. So the main features of the Earth's structure are the crust on the outside, then the mantle, then we have the outer core, then the inner core right in the middle. The crust is a thin layer split into plates, and those plates float on top of the mantle. The mantle is made of liquid rock, magma, M-A-G-M-A, -A, and the magma slowly flows around. The outer core is liquid metal, iron and nickel specifically, and the inner core is made of solid metal, iron and nickel. And here, remember the earth gets hotter and more dense towards the center. Increased heat, increased density towards the center of the earth. Right, so that is the, uh, the main knowledge and the kind of basic understanding for this lesson. Let's look at the situation you have to explain the si uh, situation in more detail. To work out the internal structure of the earth, the scientists measure earthquake waves, as stations all around the surface of the Earth. The pattern of waves is measured. The Earth's layers have made the waves change direction, so the pattern of waves can tell us the size and thickness of the layers. If there's any of these points that you didn't get into your work, write it in now. You can do that in a different colored pen, helps you to realize that you have done your corrections. And remember, if you've achieved this, then you have been able to use your scientific understanding to explain a situation in detail. White, blue, combining in uh, an even more difficult idea. Refraction of waves and density. Refraction is when a wave changes direction because it changes speed. The Earth's inner layers are more dense, so they slow down the waves more than the outer layers. Right, so we call that refraction. The inner layers will make them uh, refract more because the waves are slowing down more. The pattern of refraction can be used to estimate the change in the wave speed. And the wave speed then can be used to estimate the change in density. The more dense the layer is, the more it will have slowed down the earthquake wave. Okay, it is time to think about what you have achieved today. Just like we do in school, today I have achieved blank because I could. Right, now let's have a think about this. What could you write? Today I achieved describe, because I could name and label the layers of the Earth's structure. Today I achieved explain, because I could summarize the main features of the crust, mantle, and core. Today I achieved use, because I could 
use understanding to explain how scientists use earthquake waves to deduce the structure of the Earth. Today I achieved combine because I could explain how scientists can use refraction to estimate the density of the Earth's structure. So have a think about what you feel you've achieved today. Have you been able to remember the keywords and key facts? Have you got the main understanding for this lesson? Have you been able to use detailed understanding to explain the scientific situation? Have you been able to combine together difficult ideas to explain an even harder situation? And what I suggest you do, because it's a really nice thing to do, is tell somebody in your house what you've actually achieved. Show them your work. Show them that you've got the driving question at the top, that you've laid out orange, green, yellow and blue, that you've genuinely put a good effort in today's lesson. I'm sure the people you live with will be actually genuinely impressed and pleased with you for sitting down and concentrating and doing some proper work today. OK, so this has been the first lesson of the Earth topic. There are more lessons coming over the next few weeks. and. Please remember, now you've done the lesson, you need to go back to the Show My Homework entry for this. There is a 10 question quiz. Hopefully, now that you've learned lots from this lesson, you should find that really straightforward. Hopefully we get lots of nine and tens out of tens. We keep an eye on that and we will be emailing quiz results to parents. Again, it gives them a chance to say well done to you. Check that you've done what you're supposed to have done. Um, and well done, well done year seven. Our first proper science lesson delivered uh, from my home, here with my daughter, into your homes. And I hope you've done a really good job. I hope you've put in lots of effort and I hope you'll be able to keep that going over the next few weeks so that you can keep learning, keep learning science, keep learning this chemistry topic with good effort and good scientific detail. So well done for your efforts today and see you next time for lesson two.